Hello. In this short presentation, I'm going to talk about the tension in cables between connected bodies, um, in particular how Newton's laws of motions apply. So here, we should be able to calculate the tension in this cable if we know a bit about the motion of both of these boats. This small but powerful tugboat is pulling this enormous container ship. So let's simplify the situation slightly, and we've got two diagrams. Let's imagine the boats, first of all, are being dragged at a constant speed. So the sum of the forces in the whole system are zero, and both of the boats must be in equilibrium. That means that the forces on either one of the two boats or the whole system must be balanced. So the first boat has a weight force, and therefore it has a buoyancy force that's equal and opposite. And the second boat equally has a weight and buoyancy. There's a thrust provided by the propellers in the tugboat, and there's a drag force acting on the tugboat and a drag force acting on the bigger boat. This one will probably be larger because it's a bigger ship. Um, but we still haven't got to equilibrium yet. The thrust force looks bigger than this drag force, um, and we've not considered the cable that joins the two. Well, there's a tension in the cable, and the tension pulls both ways. Um, as the atoms in the cable are pulled far apart, the atoms pull themselves back together again. And the tension in the cable pulls the tugboat backwards, that is it acts against its motion, and it would be pulling the larger boat forwards. Now these two forces are equal and opposite, and they are in fact Newton's third law pair. Um, they both pull on different objects, so here the tension in the cable is pulling the big ship uh, forwards, and here the tension in the cable is pulling the tugboat backwards. In fact, they're acting on different parts of the cable, so the front of the cable pulls the back of the cable forwards, and the back of the cable pulls the front of the cable backwards. If we think about the boat on its own, the tugboat on its own, we've got weight and buoyancy, and then we've got this thrust force, the tension in the cable, and the drag force acting on that boat. And because we know it's in equilibrium, we can say that the thrust force is equal to the tension force plus the drag force. If we think about the forces on the larger boat, the second boat, then equally that is in equilibrium. So the tension force is equal to the drag force acting on that, though the only horizontal forces. So we can say tension equals drag too. You can also think about the forces on the entire system. So the two boats combined. Now, for that case, we don't need to consider any of the tensions in the cable any more than when you're considering the forces acting on a car, you need to consider the forces acting between molecules in the car. These are two separate molecules um, that can t consist of different components, and then the tension just pulls them together. So only the outside forces need to be considered. We've got the weight and the buoyancy, which are equal and opposite, and the thrust, which therefore is equal to the drag uh, on both of the boats. So you add those two together and you get an equal force to the thrust. Thrust equals drag 1 plus drag 2. But not all boats will be travelling at constant speed. If they're accelerating, we know the sum of the forces acting on the boats is not zero. Um, there's a net force, and the net force causes a net acceleration. So imagine the system which is speeding up. So we've got to, going to therefore have a greater forwards force than backwards force. Let's consider the forces on the boats again. We've still got weight and buoyancy on both boats. We've got a thrust force, which is now going to be bigger. And we've got two drag forces. Now, I've left those the same size as they were before, and I've drawn a bigger thrust force. Um, on their own, though, of course, we've still got to consider the tension in the cable. Now, the tension in the cable uh, may be bigger than it was before, but um, the tension would still act so that both of the four uh, the two boats are accelerating. Let's look at that for each boat in turn. So the first boat, um, we put the forces next to each other. We know that the thrust force is going to be bigger than the tension plus the drag because this boat is accelerating. So we can say thrust is greater than tension plus drag one. And the net force, if you took the thrust force and subtracted the tension and subtracted the drag, you'd get the overall or net force. And we know that net force causes acceleration from Newton's second law, F equals ma. The second boat, similarly, has a tension force and a drag force, um, but the tension is bigger than the drag. This boat is also accelerating. 
Um, so tension is greater than drag 2, and the net force would be the tension. Take away the drag, and we know that net force causes acceleration. F equals ma. And that's the overall force, remember, not just the tension force. So now it's your turn to have a go at an example. So imagine this car and trailer is decelerating at 1 meter per second squared. Um, first of all, could you draw a free body diagram for both the car and the trailer? So separate them out into two parts. And you can assume the engine produces no forwards force. So it's only backwards resistive forces that we're going to consider. But there is a tension in the tow bar between the two objects. Um, I'll give you the masses of the two objects, which we'll use later. So this is what you're going to start with. Um, and you should be able to draw the forces on it. So pause it and do that now. Let's go through some answers if you're still watching. So, of course, they'll have weight and reaction forces on both of these. And because you know the mass, you can say that the weight would be 10 times that or multiplied by 9.8. So about 2,000 newtons. And the reaction force would be equal and opposite. Horizontally is what's uh, a bit harder. And so horizontally, you're going to have a tension force in the conjoined um, cable. It's going to pull that one forwards and pull the car backwards. Um, so that's the tension holding the two things together. Now with that, this thing would be accelerating. So there's got to be a drag force, and the drag force has got to be bigger than the tension force. Equally here, we've got a drag force, which would also add on to the tension force to um, cause this car's overall deceleration. So if we add now add into the question, if the drag force on the car is 500 newtons, that's capital D, Calculate the tension in the tow bar. So to do that, I would consider just the forces on the car. It's a free body diagram for the car. Um, and I know that the sum of forces, which is mass times acceleration, uh, would be 800. That's the mass of the car multiplied by the deceleration of the car, which we're given in the question. So 800 newtons overall acts on the car. And I know that that 800 newtons consists of the tension in the cable plus the drag. And I'm told that the drag force is 500 newtons, so I can calculate that the tension in the cable is therefore 300 newtons. If you are then asked to calculate the drag force on the trailer, well, let's just consider, first of all, that because the tension in the cable is 300 newtons pulling the car back, it must also be 300 newtons pulling the trailer forwards. The forces are equal and opposite. So now we've got enough information to solve and work out the drag force. I know the sum of forces is uh, mass times acceleration. So 200 kilograms times by multiplied by 1, that's the deceleration, gives us 200 newtons. And I know that 200 newtons is made up of the drag force and the tension force. So drag, take away tension, is 200 newtons. We're taking left here as positive in this example. That means the drag force is going to be equal to 200 plus 300 newtons, which is 500 newtons. And you can check your answer because we know that the mass of the trailer is 200 kilograms. And the acceleration, therefore, is force over mass. So 500, take away 300, is divided by the mass of 200 gives you 1 meter per second squared to the left. And that's, of course, the same as your answer here. So to summarize what we've done, um, when you've got connected objects, you should draw free body diagrams for each object to consider the force on that object. And remember, the acceleration will be the same for both objects that are connected. You can apply Newton's laws and often the second law, F equals ma, to either of the two objects or both combined. And the tension, remember, in a cable is a Newton's third law pair, and it pulls both ways on two different objects. Hope that's helped.